Ned Kelly, the bush ranger, the outlaw, the legend. And I, for one, am certain that my ancestors would be mighty pissed at the idea of Ned Kelly being a national hero. Ned Kelly was born in 1855 to Irish parents John Red Kelly and Ellen Quinn. The family was quite well known to police as Red often supplemented the family income by horse stealing. Red died during a jail sentence and at the young age of 14, Ned became the main household earner. And of course, it didn't take long for Ned to get in trouble with the police as well. On the 15th of April 1878, Constable Alexander Fitzpatrick made his way to visit the Kelly home in hopes of bringing in Ned's brother Dan on the charges of stock theft. Fitzpatrick found Alan Kelly at the home and as she was quite resistant to the questioning, he left the household but kind of hovered around the area. Now he stayed around on the property and he noticed one of Ned's in-laws bringing in a riderless horse. So he went back to the Kelly house and of course he found Dan there. Apparently there was some conversation where Dan had asked Fitzpatrick to let him have his tea before bringing him in. Ned came into the kitchen brandishing a gun. He shot at Fitzpatrick and Alan attacked Fitzpatrick with a shovel. After this altercation, Ned had offered Fitzpatrick to dig out his bullet and Alan also um, bandaged his wound. Now there are reports in this incident that Fitzpatrick acted undesirably towards Ned's younger sister. Although these reports have no proof as Ned never let his mother or sister testify in court. I suppose at this stage, if the Kellys believed that attacking the constable was the only thing for them to do, there must be some pretty serious reasons behind it. The story of the Fitzpatrick ambush broke. The Kellys were branded as murderous cretins. Ellen Kelly was later convicted of assaulting a police officer and was convicted to three years of hard labor. During this sentence, Ned went into hiding in the Wombat Ranges with Joe Byrne, Dan Kelly, his brother, and Steve Hart. Now donned as the Kelly gang, the police were determined to find them. They actually sent out search parties in the Wombat Ranges. One party, whilst camping at Stringy Bark Creek, were sprung upon by the Kelly gang. Ned demanded them to ball up and throw up their arms. Constable McIntyre surrendered. However, Lonigan, Kennedy and Scanlon were killed and or mortally injured. The Kellys were declared outlaws and they soon robbed the Euroa Bank in December 1878. A generous sum of about £12,000, absolutely huge amount of money in that time by the way, was put up for the Kelly gang to be found dead or alive. They later bailed up the Bank of Gerildery in New South Wales. This is where Ned Kelly dictated to Joe Byrne the very famous Gerildery letter in an attempt to set the record straight and add his voice to the history books. Some parts that I've picked out which are particularly interesting I think. I have been wronged and my mother and four or five men lagged innocent and is my brothers and sisters and my mother not to be pitied? Also who has no alternative only to put up with the brutal and cowardly conduct? of, this is where it gets interesting, a parcel of big, ugly, fat-necked, wombat-headed, big belly, magpie-legged, narrow-hipped, splaw-footed sons of Irish bailiffs or English landlords, which is better known as the officers of justice or Victorian police, who some call honest gentlemen. And he signs off this 40-page letter with, I'm a widow's son, outlawed, and my orders must be obeyed. The Kelly gang continued to rob banks around the Kelly Ranges until their last stand in Glen Rowan in 1880. They took around 60 hostages in the Glen Rowan Hotel where they based themselves while waiting for the police. Prior to this situation, the Kellys had planned to derail a train carrying officers. However, this wasn't successful as the train was flagged down. The police came and a shootout ensued. Despite Kelly's infamous heavy armour, he was actually shot in the legs and I think the thumb. Joe, Steve and Dan were killed during this altercation. The hotel was burned to the ground and Kelly was taken in. On the 11th of November 1880, Kelly was hung in the Melbourne jail. His last words were such is life. This is a good video to bring up the interpretive nature of history. It was something that I never knew until I got to university. Anything I read in history books or saw in documentaries I took as the ultimate truth. However, historians often have an agenda, a side in politics, and they have a message that they usually want to convey. So what they will do is get out their sources and they'll pick and choose little bits 
that suit their image. And sometimes historians don't do that as well. They try and make it as true as they can. This is largely why I believe Ned has become such a legendary figure in Australian history. I find that people are quite proud of his legacy. Not to say that I don't agree with it. I just think it's interesting because I know my ancestors would have told their children that he was nothing but a horse thief. If you are interested in the story, there was a movie with Heath Ledger as Ned Kelly and I think Orlando Bloom was Joe Byrne, I'm not sure. And they soon want the want, want, 